If you own the house, shit gonna go wrong, stuff gonna break. Y'all know anytime I gotta spend something, there's a, 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 an extra cost, an emergency fund cost, y'all already know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna tell y'all about what I had to get done, why I had to get done, why what I had to get done, why I had to get it done, how much it cost me. I'm gonna talk about all that. So this is my, it seems like every two months I have a video about how important emergency funds are. So this is my recap video of why the hell you need an emergency fund and to shop around because people will try to finesse you. So if you want to find out what's going on with our finances, y'all stay tuned. Let's get it. I'm Marcus, you're the channel The Debt Free Dad, where, hey, I'm a licensed attorney, not legal or financial advice, just giving my opinion, takes, and topics, and letting y'all know what's going on in the household of The Debt Free Dad. Over here, hey, like I just said, I'm letting y'all know what we got going on with our finances as we are on the road to financial freedom and becoming first-generation millionaires. Let's talk about it. I had an expensive cost that came into play. I did a live video that got ruined and I kind of had to adjust and do something with my son. Long story short, damage to two posts to the roof on our patio. And, and it was already kind of going. I could look at it and see where the wood was split and everything. But you know your boy, if, if it's something I could do to kind of cure that defect temporarily, that's what I'm going to do. I use some wood filler, some uh, a lot of things to fill in these areas where I saw the cracks and things like that. But essentially, I knew this shit gonna get to a point where I have to get it fixed. And lo and behold, I was like, yeah, I, this is getting ridiculous. Let me go ahead and get it fixed. That's the bottom line why I haven't paid on my student loan in about two or three months, because I knew this cost was gonna come up. And I said, you know what? Rather than you know use the money in my emergency fund and been, spend two or three months putting it back, you know what? I'll just cut back on the student loan payments, stash this extra money over here. Then when I'm tired, when it's ready to get done and I'm ready, I got enough, I can go ahead and get it repaired. So I, I'm gonna throw up some images of the post and probably speak over it, but that's essentially what happened. You can see the damage on the post. You can see where it's cracked. You can see all of that stuff. I gotta get this shit fixed because the last thing I need, and it's pretty secure even though one has a bow and has some significant damage. It's not going to fall or anything, but the last thing I need is to let it go into disrepair. I got to fix it. I don't want to come out and, you know, my kids get crushed or something. Or more realistically, a hard snowfall come land on that roof and that, that post just gives underneath there. So I go through the process of getting it fixed. I'm calling around. I'm on Angie's list and all of these things. Now, I have a few tips for people who give any type of service, okay? And I, and I can speak to this because, hey, I, before I you know, had the job I had, I was in private practice. I know a lot of people who are in private practice. Y'all let me know. I think this is the first thing. If I'm running a business, never charge for an estimate. When a new client would come in in my private practice days, hey, that first consult is always on me. Now, there's a time limit because time is money now, but that first consult is always free because... I need to know what you have going on, if I actually have the tools and the skill set to help you, um, what issues potentially may be there, and if I can get some insight to if cra how crazy you may or may not be, all of that stuff is going to factor into what I'm going to charge. But I think it's crazy to charge for a consult, that initial consult, or an estimate. I had one company say, oh, we charge $50 per estimate. But if you do go with our service, that $50 get credit to the cost of repair. So what you think your boy did? You know what? I'm going to get all these free estimates, and I'm going to put y'all $50 charge of estimate asses all the way in the back. So if I find somebody before I get to y'all, I could cancel it and get my $50 back, which is exactly what I did because that's crazy. Okay, point number two, and a couple of places had this as well, which made no sense. They had mandatory minimum cost associated with the job before they were willing to accept the job. So a couple of companies came out and said, oh, if it's not $2,000 or $2,500, uh, that's our minimum to do a job. And you know what I said? Well, get your minimum having ass up off my property because I'm not going through y'all. So I think those are two things just from a business owner perspective makes no sense to me. If it's an estimate or an initial consult, don't charge people for that because no one else is, uh, most people aren't charging and why the hell would they come to you when they can go somewhere else and get it for free? 
if they talk to somebody like I did, who they think and feel confident can get the job done, they're going to go with that person and get that damn money refund before this consult or estimate even happens. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, don't price yourself out of any type of work. I think it's crazy to say, hey, uh, before I take your case, I got to, uh, if the case not worth $5,000, I'm not going to do it. That, that don't even make no sense. You don't even need to say that. All you need to do is do the estimate, see how much it costs. And then if the person say, oh, I want to go with you, you can say, oh, I'm backed up. You got plenty of ways you can get out of doing a damn job. But to say you have a mandatory minimum, mandatory minimum of $2,500. Nah, don't even come over here then because, you know, oh, oh, I'm going to put you on the back end to see what other people are charging. So I did get the work done. Um, the first guy who came in and got the estimate, this dude wanted to charge me four times more than what I actually paid to get the work done. That was crazy as hell. He came out like, oh, he came out like, oh, this don't look like it's going to be expensive and this, that, and the third. And so I'm excited, like, okay, we can get this stuff done. I'll give him credit. He was honest. When he went back and came back, he said, I don't know why the company estimated this so high, but this, uh, the company said that this is going to cost about six thousand sixty five hundred bucks to get done. If I were you, I would go somewhere else. And I said, you know what, sir? I appreciate your honesty, and I'm taking my ass somewhere else. So I actually did find someone who was willing to do it for a couple of thousand of dollars. Uh, it was able to work out. He got it done. And I can tell, hey, licensed, bonded, insured. It was cool because he was working and he had his 19-year-old son working with him. So I really respected that. Um, and I could tell when he came and explained things and the ways and the options that I had, the way he explained it, I can tell that this dude thinks outside of the box. And he gave me a several options. It was multiple ways they could have done it. He gave me two or three options that they could have done and allowed me to choose. It cost me 20 something hundred bucks or something to that effect. But I was so pleased with his work, his honesty, and the fact that his estimate was way lower than a lot of other people. I gave the guy like a 10% tip because I was really impressed. And I know that that's going to be a plug for future service. So, hey, the moral of this story is have an emergency fund. I gave the business owners some gems. Don't charge mandatory minimums for amount of work before you get started. Don't charge for estimates or consult because you're going to run away a lot of business. And the last thing that you got to take away from this story, if you own the house, shit going to go wrong, stuff going to break. So that's what the emergency fund is for. As always, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Love y'all. Peace.